Welcome to Fulton First United Methodist Church. We're happy to have you here today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. May the acolytes please bring the fire in, the light of God, and light our candles. We are gathered today to hear God's word, an invitation for the thirsty, a refuge for the weary, a reminder of our great need that points to an even greater Savior. If you have any announcements, please make your way to the microphone. Morning, every- oh. there. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I want to thank the people that came out on Friday for the CNY Arts first concert series that we will start. We'll have an artist of the month, hopefully. But we are open for business, full business. We got our certificate of full occupancy Friday or Thursday. No, Friday, the day of our concert series. So we have a full occupancy. We are open for business. Just let everybody know if they want to, they have some sort of um, artistic um, talent, you can come see us if you want to teach class or if you want to just show your artistic, you know, just let us know and just call the office. But I'd also like you to know that during this Lenten season, just before Palm Sunday, we will have John, his story, performing on Saturday, four, uh, April 6th through Sunday. April 7th. It's just one weekend. There's going to be two shows, a matinee and an evening product or show on Saturday and Sunday and one evening on Friday. So just letting you know that we have our production of John, his story. Good morning. I'm Glenda Abadi. Uh, today, right after church in the sanctuary, we're going to have an open forum to talk about how, going forward in the future with children's programs and anybody who's interested in lending their ideas, volunteering to take some action, are welcome to come. Uh, we, we need to reimagine children's programs and, and find a way to go forward. So uh, just, you know, come right in and sit down after church and we'll try to keep it, you know, pretty short. Thanks. Good. Good morning. My name is Tom Brown, and I'd like to remind all of you about the meatball subs. All right? They're just great. Don't forget. Is this the last, is this the last chance? No. we got next week. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Now, for Al Moser, all right, uh, the church garden. You know, the snow is disappearing. It's time to start thinking about the church garden. Any of you are interested in plots, 
for this coming summer, please let me know. It's a wonderful opportunity. And um, <clears throat> one of the great things about being part of that is if you're close to Karen and Jim O'Brien's plot, you'll have tomatoes for the next two years. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Lord's House on this fourth Lord's Day in Lent. Um, today, we are really pleased to have our brother Edward um, sharing as our liturgist, and we wish him well and his um, family. And there are a number of persons about whom we are concerned today uh, who will be in our prayers. Some are um, hospitalized, some are um, home, not feeling well. Um, so we want to keep all such persons in our thoughts and prayers today. We are reminding you on Wednesday of our midweek service at 6 in the evening. Um, last month, we were supposed to have Janet Cobb, our accordionist, pianist, and singer. But due to the weather, she was unable to come. In fact, the service was canceled. So she's coming on Wednesday. And we look forward to having as many of you as possible and others so you can spread the word. Let others know that this service is taking place on Wednesday and they're welcome to be here. We will be having um, testimonies and um, sharing of faith. So it should be quite interesting and uplifting and enlightening. On the first Sunday of April, we're going to be having um, our spring um, children's service, the first Sunday of April. Our children will be leading the service. So that is a service you really um, want to be present for. You don't want to miss that. Uh, we're going to be having um, children from the Noah's Nursery as well as children from our church school and others who might be interested. So during our conversation today on children's programs, um, we, will, we will touch on that a little bit. So keep that in mind, and uh, we look forward to that on the first Sunday of April. We have some other um, announcements that will be in the bulletin concerning Holy Week and um, a, a movie on the the 14th, I think, of April, that Sunday, Palm Sunday, I think is the 14th of April. So we want you to keep that in mind and we look forward to having you. Welcome. God bless you as we worship together today. God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and bow on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. 
When I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help, and in the shadows of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you, your right hand upholds me. Let us pray. God's word revealed, Jesus and the salvation he offers to sin sick souls. God's word refreshed, bringing hope into desperate places. God's word reminded that this world is temporary and that God's good plan will ultimately prevail. God's word restored, mending broken hearts and filling empty spaces as grace falls like rain. How do we know? Eyes are lifted, countenances are changed, voices respond in praise to our great God. Let us allow God's word to saturate our hearts and minds, filling us to overflowing with true soul hydration that can only come from one source. Amen.
Please say hello to everyone around you. Let us thank God. We thank you, God, for the water that sustains us, that is the mother of all life, that powers plants which give us oxygen, that can start as a bubbling spring, fill a pond, flow into a creek, and eventually be a mighty river meeting the ocean. We are grateful for the things filling our lives. Let us use them to share your love with those closest to us. And give us time, Lord, to share what is important with our family and friends. We are all claimed and loved by you, just as we are. Amen. Amen. Ushers may come forward.
now is the time for the children to come forward. We have any children worshiping with us this morning? Come on up. There we are. Come on in. For the Bible tells me so. Let the words be like keep going. Any other ideas? Any other place you can think where there's not much good water to drink? On a mountain? Yeah, if you're too high up, you get to the point where it's all hard. It's all ice and snow. And I'm thinking of another place. Yeah, the ocean. There's a whole lot of water out in the ocean, but can you drink it and live? No, it's salt water. It is? Have you drinking some salt water in the ocean? Drunk some salt water? remember my verb tense yeah I have too and it's okay if you taste a little bit of it because it's kind of salty but if you try to swallow a whole cup full it's not good we have to be careful in our lives we're surrounded all over by things entertainment people toys and we need to look for the things that are going to enforce us and re-encourage us 
things that will build us up so we can be stronger and we can be better able to help other people and support those that we love. So I didn't make salt water. I was thinking about that this morning. But I, I've been a little sick the last couple of days. Has anyone else here been a little sick this week? Yeah. yeah. It's that time of year. Everything's changing outside. We're getting ready for spring and our bodies are starting to go, what? <laughs> we need to choose wisely to build ourselves with living water, to fill us with God's word and create a community of caring. I brought some pictures with me today of some churches that are doing adopt-a-street initiatives, prayer mobilizations. There you take a look, pass it on. Going into areas where crimes, violent crimes, murders even have been committed, inviting people to cookouts, having them come and share, inviting the police as well to come and all sit down and have a time to be in fellowship with each other, like we come here every Sunday. So I want you to think about how you can do that this week, how you could invite somebody or go somewhere to be a bit in fellowship with those people. Okay. Thank you very much for coming up today. And have a great time at Children's Church. Thank you so much, Ed. A round of applause for Ed. Now, before they go off to Children's Church, I think it was recently, um, the, the Vosbury family can help me out. Okay. But I think um, we should all recognize our good friend Lucas here, who um, was crowned, is it Prince? There was a, a school parade, and he was um, Prince Lucas, right? Yes, Prince Lucas, so congratulations. And whenever we, we hear of our children um, you know, doing great things, we want to commend them very positive, just as you were saying. It wasn't too long ago Dylan was doing that. Dylan? Yeah. He, very nice. Okay. That's your Dylan. Yeah, my Dylan. Your Dylan, right. Yes, yes. Well, congratulations as well, Dylan. So congrats to all of you for all the positive things in which you are involved, all the wonderful ways you are making an impact on your community. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile upon you and show you favor. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace this day and always. Amen. So you may go with Maddie now, and then um, on the first Sunday of April, um, some of them, all of them, we hope, will be involved in that children's service that we are planning for the spring. God bless you. Thank you, brother. Very good. Thank you. Let us read the passage for today. Isaiah 55, 1 to 9. Let us read together. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest of fear. Give air and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promise to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and a commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways 
and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. A priceless invitation. Ho, everyone that thirsts, come to the waters, and he that has no money, come, buy and eat, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Isaiah 55 verse 1. I'd like to thank Edward for the way he led us this morning. And if you were following closely, you will realize that he has preached um, the sermon, basically. That the message today um, is based on coming to God and receiving that mercy and that grace, that salvation that the Lord can offer, can provide. Receiving that refreshment and that renewal that only God can supply. So here in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, we find one of the great biblical invitations. And as we listen to this invitation, we discover that there is a universality about this invitation. It is an all-inclusive invitation. No one is excluded from this invitation. You know that there are times when invitations are given where some people are excluded. For example, an invitation may be given to attend an event. And we may hear that no children allowed. Or, in most cases, when invitations are given, say, to a wedding celebration, it is not everyone in the community that might receive an invitation, but it is given to particular people or individuals. But this invitation is not like that. When it comes to God's offer of mercy, God's offer of grace, God's offer of salvation, it is for everyone. It is for those that are thirsty. Ho, everyone that thirsts, come to the waters. Now, thirst is something that everyone feels. At some time, we all feel thirsty. We all get hungry. We have a deep longing for drink or food. That's when thirst and hunger are thought of in, in physical terms. These are strong desires that can drive individuals to do just about anything to find satisfaction. I used to hear that a hungry man is an angry man. And a hungry or thirsty person might do just about anything to have that hunger and that thirst satisfied. For example, if you read Genesis chapter 25, 29 to 34, you will find there 
the story of Esau selling his birthright to his brother Jacob. Esau was hungry, just came in from the fields, and his brother Jacob was cooking. And of course, Esau asked his brother for some food, from, for some stew. And Jacob said to him, I will give it to you if you, if you sell me your birthright. And Esau said, well, what is a birthright to me if I am hungry? You see, Esau was the first born, and Jacob wanted to take that position. It's an interesting story. You can read it in Genesis 25. So Esau, on that occasion, sold his birthright in order to have his hunger satisfied. But as the word thirst is used in this passage... It represents a deep spiritual need. A spiritual need that is common to all people. And that is why this invitation has this universal appeal. Because we all have spiritual needs. We all have a deep, deep spiritual need, my friends. And in Psalm 42, verse 1 to 4, the psalmist compares his longing for God to a deer panting for water, which we all feel. We all have that longing for God, that desire for God. But of course, sometimes individuals don't recognize what that desire is. And so the psalmist writes, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When I go to meet, when can I go and meet with God? My tears, he says, have been my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one. With shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Everyone who thirsts, who feels that deep longing, that emptiness in the soul can come. And drink from God's never ceasing streams of mercy, of grace, of salvation. That is what today's invitation, today's biblical passage is about. If you ever feel that void, that emptiness, that desire, you are welcome to come and drink from God's never ceasing streams. The other thing about this passage that it's important to see is that it is an invitation to those who have no money, those in poverty. Often money is a problem for some people. Oftentimes, people complain about not having funds, not having enough money. There are those who are stricken with poverty and as a result are left out or can't afford to enjoy some of the luxuries and some of the niceties in life. Thankfully, my friends, God's mercy, God's grace, God's salvation is free. Which means that even if one doesn't have money, one can still receive it. So listen to the passage today. The invitation in today's text goes out to those who have no money. 
they can come. They can come, they can buy and eat without money and without price. There are not many places that you can go and eat without money. That you can go and have a good time without having funds. But here is God's invitation extended to all who thirst, all who feel that deep spiritual desire and longing for God. Even if you have no money, the text is saying you can come, you can buy, you can eat without money and without price. And that is why we call it a priceless invitation. Because it is available without money. It is priceless. It will not cost you anything. And so my friends... As I read this text, I also see something else in it that you should see as well. That it is for those who have money, the wealthy. And that is why the text has this universal appeal because it is not only for those who are poor, who have no money, but it is also an appeal to those who have money who are wealthy. In the passage, a very profound question is asked. The passage says, why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? And as I reflected on that question, I thought, how true, how typical to see people spending money on that which is not bread, which does not satisfy. They labor after those things which bring no lasting satisfaction. And I add the word lasting satisfaction because some of the things that we acquire in life can bring us temporary satisfaction, a fleeting sense of joy but nothing that really lasts forever. So, not everyone is without money. There are those who have money. They are also invited to come because as the passage makes very clear, having money and being able to acquire things will not always satisfy. So it doesn't matter which category you fall in. If you fall into the category of those without money, or if you fall into the category of those with money, this appeal, this invitation is for you. The story is told of a Quaker who had this sign put out on a vacation piece of land next to his home. And the sign read, this land will be given to anyone who is truly satisfied. A wealthy farmer who was riding by stopped to read the sign and said to himself, since our friend the Quaker is so ready to part with this plot, I might as well claim it before someone else does. I am a rich man and have all I need, so I certainly qualify. With that, he went up to the door and explained what, was, what he was there for. Uh, uh, and art thou truly satisfied? The Quaker asked. I am indeed, for I have everything I need. Friends, said the Quaker, if thou art satisfied, why dost thou want the land for? Friends, there's a limit to which this world can satisfy us. There's a limit to which money can bring us satisfaction. And what this text 
is saying today is that no matter how much we acquire in this life, there will always be something missing until we come and we receive God's mercy, God's grace, and God's salvation. Someone else said, money will buy a bed, but not sleep. How many people sleep on beds or lie on beds at night, but don't really sleep? Money may buy you books, but not brains. Money might buy you food, but not appetite. Finery, but not beauty. Medicine, but not health. Luxury, but not culture. Amusement, but not happiness. A crucifix, but not a savior. A temple of religion, but not heaven. Yes, friends, all these things but there, there is a limit to what money can really bring and that is a deep satisfaction that only God can supply. And so as we go today, as we think about this invitation in this book of Isaiah, I end by saying that the offer that is made here today is an offer of quality. It is an offer of quality. While God's mercy is free, it is not cheap. And when we say that it is a priceless invitation, while, while it, 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 it will cost you nothing, my friends, it costs God everything in order that we might have this mercy. It is not cheap. It is not lacking in quality. It is of far more value than anything money can buy or this world can offer. So come, buy and eat without money and without price. Buy wine and milk. And whenever you see that phrase, wine and milk, in the Bible, Wine represents a, a joy unspeakable that the world cannot give you. And milk is that, that nourishment that only God can provide, that you can receive from the word of God, where you can feast to all eternity. So come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. And as you go, my friends, do not spend your money, whatever you might have. Do not spend your effort, do not spend your time, your labor on things that do not satisfy, but invest yourselves and your souls in God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The choir will sing, Come to the water. And as you listen, my friends, pray and receive what God offers.
So my sisters and brothers, let us pray. Let us lift up to God today those who are sponsoring our web ministry. We pray for the Vosbury family in honor of the, 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 the ushers here at our congregation. We give thanks for the Vosbury family for their generosity and thoughtfulness to this congregation. And we thank God for our ushers and the work that they do in welcoming others and ensuring the orderly process in this congregation whenever we meet for worship and other events. We pray that they will continue to be faithful in their service. We lift up to God today our other um, web sponsors, the Barry family. We thank you, Lord, for them and for the contributions that they make to this congregation. We pray, especially in Thanksgiving, for Ryan, who will be celebrating his 18th birthday on the 28th of this month, Thursday. Lord, we thank you for being with Ryan, for um, supporting him and, and keeping him. We thank you, Lord, for your healing mercies upon him and pray that each day he will continue to experience a stronger sense of well-being. So be with him, Lord, especially as he prepares for his um, concert tomorrow. We pray that he will be fit and able to perform Today, Lord, we also lift up to you our brother Tom Anderson, who has been hospitalized. And we pray for him, as well as others, Lord, who are in hospital today. A number of persons whose names are listed in our bulletin. We lift them up to you. We pray for Patrick Barry and and um, Patrick also at the VA hospital. Lord, you know our frame. You remember that we are dust and we thank you that you are the great physician, that you can heal our diseases. You can redeem our lives from destruction. We pray that those who are sick will know your presence and your love today. We remember as well Janet Tonkin, and pray that she will continue to recover from her illness. Lord, we pray as well for those who mourn, for the family of um, Theresa Dima, all her family members, those who are present and those who are not here today, we lift them up to you and pray that they will be comforted in their time of grief. O oh Lord, we thank you that you sent Jesus to conquer death and that through him we have hope as a result of the resurrection. O oh loving God, be with us as we go from this place today. Grant us your presence in the meeting that will be held right after the service as we imagine and, and, and vision about children's work in this congregation we pray that you will guide us to come up with decisions and programs that will enhance what we do in our children's work and uh, in fact attract um, younger people to this congregation lord in your mercy hear our prayers in the name of your son jesus christ our lord we pray amen amen We conclude the service today as we sing the hymn, or the, as we have this I Worship song, um, 10,000 Reasons.
It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, guide, protect, and bless you. The Lord mercifully watch over you and be gracious unto you, and pour out upon you the abundance of his goodness, that you may live in peace, and in the world to come, have eternal life. Go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs>